It's okay. The parts are coming. The parts are coming, girl. No need to panic. Is that like a panic attack? Hey. Your turbo parts are coming. Breathe. Breathe. Just breathe, girl. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Peaches and I are over here having a, obviously like an anxiety attack or whatever this is, because our freaking turbo parts, see, here it goes again. I keep talking about it, she keeps having an episode. Our turbo parts have not shown up. Hey, you okay? We gotta talk to these people. Our turbo parts have not shown up, although the mailman did not forget where I live because he brings me bills every day, but he cannot seem to bring the couplers I need to finish my project. If you look behind me over there, my car is still on jack stands and it's still waiting. So what I'd like to do, instead of just ghosting on my YouTube account and leaving you guys hanging and wondering what the hell happened, we'll go over some of the parts that I actually have, some of the junk that I do have. Some of the things even came from back east, like Pennsylvania or some crap in Colorado. And the turbo plumbing pieces I'm waiting for are literally like 20 miles away and it's been eight days in the system for shipping. So I'm beginning to believe that they're not coming and we're having anxiety, we're having a hard time breathing over here. But um, let's take a look at the parts I do have. We'll show you the intercooler. And um, one of these days, I'm gonna get my parts and then we're gonna slap that thing together. We're gonna go do some smoky burnouts, hopefully go back to Irwindale. And worst case, if my shit doesn't come in by like the end of the week, I'm just gonna drive somewhere where they have the pieces I need, namely like CX Racing or one of these spots because it's all local, I'm in SoCal and I will just physically buy them, cancel the order I put on eBay for the other stuff that should have been here, and uh, we will finish it that way. So one way or another, Peaches and I are gonna get this project done so she can stop having anxiety and she can breathe again. You good, girl? Let's go show them the parts. Let's go take a look at these parts. All right, so here is all the junk that I have. Let me kind of pull them apart. I'll spread everything out on the table, kind of go over what it is uh, that's gonna go under the hood of this guy and hopefully make some turbo sounds sooner than later because I feel like I'm just watching grass grow and it's getting annoying. But let me open this stuff up. Let's take a all look. Right, I got all the junk laid out on the table. We'll go through each item, what it is, kind of what I paid, if I can kind of remember off the top of my head. It is a budget build. But at the end of the day, I'm not trying to count every single cent and go, I did it for 400 bucks or I did it for 200 bucks. But I was definitely budget-minded in doing all this stuff. So we'll take a look at the items. I'll show you, and then I'll let you know if it works or not. You're gonna know, you're gonna see the dyno numbers. We're gonna throw this bitch on the dyno, make some horsepower with it. And we're shooting for 500 wheel horsepower is what we're shooting for. It makes 352 horsepower, 310 um, torque at the wheels. So we're roughly around 400 at the crank give or take, depending on what the loss is through the TH400. So 500 should be relatively an easy goal. So we'll find out. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Never had a turbo car. This will be the first turbo pile that uh, I own. I'm excited. So here's my stuff. First off, we have a Magnafuel 625. Uh, this is a 4301 part number. The 4303 is a big boy. This is a step below. I bought this used. If you saw my other episode, I actually installed this in my car and it didn't work. So I sent it back to Magnafuel. It cost me like $62 plus shipping to have a couple little things done. Flow check, they said the cap, whichever cap probably this one was on backwards. So maybe the guy I previously bought it from inspected it, put it together backwards and it didn't work. But this thing is good to go as per Magnafuel. Great company to work with. I would highly recommend, even if you find a used one for a decent deal, buy it because you can send it back and they'll just fix the damn thing. This is a three bar map. You need this for boost. I got this, it's kind of hard to see, it's in the package, but LS1 style plug and play. Um, it's a three bar map from EFI Source. This was like 40 bucks. And they're a pretty reputable company. I bought other stuff from them. This is a no name map. So I'm hoping it works. It had good reviews. So we got that one. So this is an ITC feed. This is where the oil is gonna come from. Um, it's right above the pan where the filter is. You just bolt this bad boy on and then it's for a twin turbo setup. I figure I could just plug one and if I ever go twins in the future, I guess I could just tee off of the one or run two separate lines. And, uh, you got options. This is the oil 
feed. This goes basically into this. This goes on the top of the turbo. This is the drain. Uh, again, this is ITC billet for the GT45. And these are all the cheapest ones that I found on eBay. So, and then this has no restrictor in it. We're gonna try to run wide open, put it in there with this. And if we have smoke issues, I'll just get a restrictor. We'll call it good. This is a three and a quarter V band that's special for the exhaust side on the turbo. I didn't realize I needed until I went to match it up and didn't have a V band and then I looked at it. So that's what this is. Um, again, eBay special, cheapest one I could find. I think this was like 30 bucks. I wanna say these were like 10 bucks a piece roughly, 40 bucks. Um, this is a boost controller manual. It's a turbo smart looks like clone and it is blue and that is pretty much it just manual boost control there's a the little one-way valve or whatever the deal is and that is it so we're just going to run that we'll bolt that in there somewhere underneath the hood this is my blow off valve that i may or may not run i bought it because it was cheap and i had it and i figured i got all this stuff for the same cost as like a decent wastegate and speaking of wastegates here's my wastegate and i can look at the receipts but these are essentially the cheapest ones on ebay i assembled this one because i was all excited um it looks decent and then this one is not assembled and also this is actually a water-cooled wastegate that you can hook up plumbing to i guess that's what the ans are for and you can run water through it to cool it although i'm not going to get that fancy i don't think you know we're good i'm good with that and then this was actually not 39.99 this was free from my buddy jim because he had this laying on the shelf you can see all the dust that's collected over the years I think he bought it for something and never used it. It's never even cracked the seal. Um, so again, we may put this in probably because it's kind of fun to have a boost gauge, I guess. But um, I'm still going over options for gauges in the car. I might do like a digital dash setup. But these are all the parts needed to complete that bad boy. So we're just waiting. And then I got a big bag of bends and miscellaneous things down there that we can couple together to get this thing to make turbo noises. So I don't know if that was long-winded enough for you, but that covers all the bases and all the junk that I bought. Most of the stuff is cheap eBay knockoff turbo components, but they seem to work. They get decent reviews, and if it gets the job done or at least gets me started, we're good. Um, I have a theory, though, building cars, and it's kind of funny because you always want to buy the best thing you can for the most part because you don't want to have to buy things twice. That's typically and generally my opinion. If you can afford it, just jump straight to the good stuff. But in all reality, like with this and the cheap turbo and the components that I'm putting in, it's all in place, it's all there, and that's what my budget is right now for this vehicle in the situation I'm in. But it'll have a turbo and components in place, so as things go out or things happen or whatever, I can put a different turbo right back in its place that's nicer. I can put a better wastegate in place of that one that's better. So I can upgrade the components and they're, they're so cheap relative, you know, to what things used to cost that just to get this all in, get it started, get all your stuff in place, have some fun with it. And then as things break or die, then you can upgrade. And granted, yeah, there's always a chance that the cheap turbo comes apart and the motor dies and all this stuff, bad things happen. I get that, but also we're playing with the used short block. I don't have a lot of money in this motor. Worst case, if it takes a cam out, that's really where all the money in this whole engine is really in that cam. So that would be the big downfall, but you know, it's a risk I'm willing to take for the sake of hot rodding and then to show you guys that it works or it doesn't because that's kind of what it's all about. Let's set stuff on fire and see what happens. This is just another way for me to entertain myself and bring you guys along. So I hope you enjoy. I hope the freaking mailman finds my house again. He seems to find it with fucking piles of bills, but he can't find it with packages I'm waiting for. I think that's a consensus probably with all you guys too, but He's going to show up one of these days where I'm just going to drive over there and buy couplers. So the clock is ticking. I'm getting impatient. In absolute worst case, I'll just throw the damn exhaust back on and we'll go make some more hits at Irwindale so I can at least have a little fun. My wife got me a new jacket for Christmas. So I am legit. I got a helmet and jacket. I just need a car to go racing. So that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Keep it locked. We'll get some stuff rolling. I'm out. What happened? <laughs> I like it. It's a weird place to stop. No, I'm glad you did.